Hi everybody. So I wanted to pop on here and I've had a lot of new followers lately and there's a lot of things going on recently in my life um, in regards to my MS that I thought it would be good to share and just kind of introduce myself and my diagnosis story and some of the things I struggle with. Um, so hi, I'm Melissa. I'm 35 years old. I'll be 36 in March of next year. I have a child, a son, who is 21 months and a husband. We've been married for five years. So my diagnosis story goes back to November of 2018. My husband and I were uh, celebrating our one-year anniversary at a Penn State football game. Uh, we had happened to be go to Penn State Rutgers with my in-laws and I was looking at the scoreboard across the stadium and I suddenly went, couldn't read it. Uh, I, and I chalked it up to, I'm getting old. I was probably, I was 31 at the time, so I wasn't that old. But, um, you know, I've always had a little bit of issues being farsighted, uh, but nothing that really needed to be corrected with glasses. But I thought maybe, you know, it's time to, to go to see the eye doctor and get that checked out. We went and visited my sister afterwards and she lived close by to the stadium and I went from having sight in my eyes and feeling perfectly fine that day to having this massive headache start. Um, it was this like, they, I think they call it like an ice pick headache. It felt like somebody was driving an ice pick straight through my head, all the way through, all the way through the back of my head. Um, and it just, was unrelenting the only thing that made me feel better was closing my eyes so on the drive home which is a little over an hour i fell asleep and when i got home i went right to bed the next day i woke up and i didn't have the headache anymore um and decided let me go to the gym let me you know do a little bit of working out maybe sweating it out maybe i was you know starting to come down with something um and i just want to sweat it out and while I was at the gym, in between sets, I was, you know, reading texts on my phone and I went from being able to read it to suddenly not being able to read it and just like my eyes kind of doing this like in and out of focus thing. And um, I was like, this is weird. Never had this happen before, but again, chalked it up to I probably just need glasses. I went home and I uh, was working on my master's degree at the time. Uh, so I'm on the computer trying to, um, you know, do my homework, get you know, whatever I needed to do done. And, um, I suddenly again started not being able to see the computer screen was just like having these blurry spots and it was going in and out. I happened to remember that my aunt had migraines and that she would have issues with her eyes sometimes with the migraines. So I gave her a call. She's also a nurse practitioner and... And she, when I told her what was going on, that I had this massive headache yesterday, that my vision's been weird since, and I can't really see, she was like, you need to go to the emergency room right now. Um, she's like, I don't want to scare you, but you really should go because God forbid you're having an aneurysm, a stroke, uh, a brain tumor, it, I don't know. But with migraines, usually the vision happens to like, the vision is the start of the migraine and then it goes away after you have the headache. So she scared me enough to go to the hospital. Uh, when I got there and told them, well, I mean, I feel fine. I just can't see. Like, <laughs> they're like, what do you mean you can't see? I'm like, I went from 2020 vision last night and it's just everything is blurry. So they did the eye chart test and I could barely read like the big E that's on top of the eye chart uh, with my right eye. And everything was also blurry, a little bit blurry in my left eye, but it it's always blurry in my left eye. So they did MRIs and a CAT scan and um, some blood work and a couple with, I don't know, probably all of that took like five hours from the time I got to the ER till all of that was done. And when the attending came into the room with the two residents that had been, you know, taking my background and my story, I had a feeling something is wrong. Um, my grandfather on my mother's side passed away of, at a young age of, I think he was in his early 50s, of brain cancer. So I immediately obviously went there thinking, oh my God, why is the attending in here? If you've ever been unfortunate enough to be in the emergency room, the attendings usually don't come in uh, to deliver results. 
they sometimes make a stop in, but when he, they, he came in, like I said, with the two residents, I just was immediately like panicked. Um, he said, oh, I have good news and bad news. And I immediately was like, whoop. And his good news was that I didn't have brain cancer. So you can imagine the sigh of relief that I felt. His bad news was that they didn't know what it was and I was getting admitted to the hospital and would have to see neurology in the morning and um, they had no clue how long I'd be there, what other testing neurology was going to want. Um, and the only thing he said was, it could be multiple sclerosis. Um, and if that was enough to scare me because at the time, uh, the only two people I knew in this world that had multiple sclerosis were either wheelchair bound and could barely do anything for themselves. And the other person, um, that I knew that had it, um, again, wasn't, was walker. You had to use a walker to get around and really couldn't, um, get up and down stairs or do things like that was very reliant, um, on the walker. So immediately my brain flashed to, I'm 31 years old and I'm not going to be able to work out, do CrossFit, do these things that I love to do. Um, so yeah, I spent the next five days, which happened to be Thanksgiving was one of those days in the hospital and uh, getting poked and prodded. I think I had to give, a, do a sample of blood work every five freaking minutes. It felt like, and, um, I had to have this evoke potential test where they like stick electrodes to your head and glue them to your head. And then they show you this like fuzzy kind of screen. And it's, I guess, to test to see if your like optic nerve is coordinating with whatever thing in your brain. I don't really know, but I had to do this test and it kind of made me dizzy and really want to throw up. Um, and I think like the worst part was probably getting the spinal tap. Um, because, uh, I don't like saying no to people and the resident asked, Oh, can I do this? This would be my first one. And I, of course I was like, yeah. Um, and he hit my spine four times. So, uh, it wasn't fun experience. I got through it though. <laughs> and again, I got all these results back and it was leading toward looking like multiple sclerosis, but they really couldn't say it was definitely multiple sclerosis because it really, I had, I think two lesions at that point, one on my optic nerve and one in my corpus callosum somewhere in my midbrain. And, um, I also had like this venous cavernoma thing, uh, somewhere in, I don't know, my right brain that, uh, they said was probably been there, but for a while, but they don't really know. Anyway, so I got discharged from the hospital and I went to an MS specialist because they said follow up with an MS specialist just to, to see because it's probably that. Um, and he got me started on a disease modifying therapy right away because he, even though he couldn't officially diagnose me, um, in the U S you have to have, at least with this doctor, his stance is that you have to have lesions in two different parts of your brain, which I did, but two different instances of it happening to be officially called multiple sclerosis. Now with the damage that I've had to my left eye over the years, he actually thought that I probably had optic neuritis a long time ago, um, because they they did see some damage on that optic nerve, but that I never really I didn't really notice it because I still had one good working eye. Um, in April, I think, uh, or late March of 2019, so just a few months after this first in incident, uh, my left eye had a bout of optic neuritis, and I landed myself back in the hospital, back in the ER, back on five days worth of high dose steroids. Which, if you've ever been on high dose steroids, it's not fun. Uh, the side effects from them are terrible. Um, but yeah, they helped. It helped restore my vision and, and stop the issues that I was having. But unfortunately, that time, my vision wasn't fully restored. It took about five months for my eyes to recover from that incident. And um, I still have issues to this day with my eyes. Anytime I get sick, um, anytime my hormones fluctuate. So I'm a female every every month, my hormones fluctuate. I get symptomatic and I have issues with my eyes. My, um, my vision actually splits a lot into two. Um, so I'll see like the same line twice. I'll also get the 
this thing where my eyes kind of feel like they're kind of moving separately. Um, my stigmas, I think it's called. Um, and it like the room will feel like it's waving. I also, um, yeah, my eyes just don't really work properly ever. Um, but they're recovered enough that I can, can continue to work and, and function. Um, I got on that disease modifying therapy, the, uh, Copaxone, which is the injectable self use, inject yourself three times a week. It ended up, it worked for a while, but then I got some breakthrough lesions. I had another lesion again in my splenium in my corpus callosum. So it's a second one there. And then I had a long lesion I don't remember where it was somewhere on the left side of my brain and the gray matter uh white matter gray I don't remember I don't know I'm not a doctor but um yeah so I had that uh, breakthrough and then again and at the same time I had uh, optic neuritis the inflammation started on my optic nerve again um so because of that I had to go on switch therapies um I'm now on a infusion two times a year that pretty much knocks out your immune system, your B cells, so that your body can't really attack itself anymore. And it seems to be working well for controlling my MS. I really haven't had any new uh, lesion activity, um, but I also don't really have, I really have a lot of my symptoms. They come and go a lot, um, more come than go. And um, I'll talk about my symptoms in a second. But I will say the disease modifying therapy, the DMT I'm on now, because it knocks out my immune system, I get sick all the freaking time. And um, when I'm sick, it makes my symptoms flare up even worse uh, than my normal baseline. So my normal baseline, you know, I have a lot of these symptoms, but then when I get sick, when my heart rate goes up, any kind of extreme temperature changes, I get um, very symptomatic. Uh, so my symptoms, so other than the eye issues that I've, I've talked about, um, my fatigue is crushing some days, if not most days, uh, I get through my work day and, you know, get to the gym and take care of my son. And by the 7.30 at night, I'm ready for bed. Um, I have zero energy left to give to anything else. Um, and one of my pet peeves is when people say, oh, I'm so tired too. Like, I don't wish it on you, but sometimes I do wish that people would understand the difference between being tired uh, and being able to sleep and recover from that tired state um, versus fatigue, which no matter how much I sleep or try to recover, I don't get over that tired state. Um so there's that symptom. And then I have uh, issues with my balance and coordination. Um, I used to be a field hockey player. I used to be an Olympic lifter. Uh, I've done CrossFit for a better part of a decade, more than a decade at this point. Um, and I've noticed significant changes in my gait patterns because uh, to compensate for the lack of balance I feel um, when I'm just even just standing up. Um, I run funny now. Uh, my gait is weird. Um, so there's that. And I'll say that those issues actually started post-pregnancy. So when my hormones kind of skyrocketed and then fell and then now they level and then leveled out, um, it kind of left me with these issues. Uh, and I'll say like post-pregnancy, I had another uh, minor relapse and again, some, some new lesions, but nothing like massive. Um, but it, even if I say lesions, it doesn't really matter because they don't always clinically correlate um, to the symptoms that we have um, in MS patients. So I have that and then um, my fine motor skills are not great. I used to work in the lab um, and because of my tremors in my hands, uh, especially if I'm trying to do like weigh things out and do fine motor skills and if I move my hands out from my plane of body, uh, I have issues with controlling them. Um, 
and that's part of the reason why I stopped working in the lab. I took more of an office-based role uh, at my at my job uh, as a scientist. I am a scientist by trade, and um, so yeah, I couldn't. I stopped being able to weigh things and like transfer things and do precise movements, and eventually. I stopped being able to um, hold things. I have a tendency to be holding something and not even realize that I drop it. Uh, I do it with forks and spoons all the time. I miss my mouth. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm going to eat, I get food all over me. I look, constantly look like a disaster, but um, yeah. I have a hard time doing my hair sometimes because like holding my arms up and trying to blow dry my hair, things like that, I kind of start getting shaky and tremory or not able to really do what I want to do. Like I can't really, I can braid my hair still, but like not really finely braid it like I used to. Um, so yeah, there's those. And then um, one of my biggest other symptoms is my feet and hands go numb at times and I can't really feel where I'm doing with them. Um, and that's probably the one that drives me nuts the most because like if you've ever like sat on your arm too long or, you know, had your foot in a certain position then move in and you get those pins and needles that's kind of like what it feels like um but it's like I can't get it to go away and it's not because I've been sitting on it too long so it's just like this constant thing that's like there and sometimes it's slightly better than others but 99% of the time it's like constantly there um and I'm I'm always like slapping my foot on the ground or like shaking my hands because the you know, I kind of get that numbness and like doing that like kind of I'll say wakes it up I don't know it might just be in my my mind that it helps but it seems to help um so you'll see me doing that a lot but anyway that's my diagnosis story those are my symptoms um again like those are my symptoms today um uh with MS you know you sometimes have good days and sometimes have worse days um but, you know, my baseline these days has been, um, has been these symptoms and is not really getting any better. Um, they tell me yeah, I can do things like take muscle relaxer for the spasticity in my back and my legs and that I feel and, and my arms, the spasticity that I have and spasticity is, you know, muscle tightness, um, but I can't function on it. Tried it. I literally felt like a zombie. Uh, they tell me I can take gabapentin uh, for the um, nerve symptoms, like the the numbness, tingling symptoms I get. But it's really an off-label use of a medication that may or may not work um, and also has its own host of side effects. They tell me I can take things like... Um, amantadine or ritalin for my fatigue but it's like again a whole host of symptoms of side effects and you know just off-label use of this stuff that's not really meant to, to it's just meant to mask the symptoms and not necessarily meant to to heal them so um that's why I choose not to use them and try to do everything in my power to stay healthy eat healthy move use movement as medicine um yeah so that's kind of my diagnosis story and um as I have more to talk about I'll, I'll share more um but I just thought it would be good to connect and share my story um there's a lot of people out there MS used to be a really rare disease but it's um unfortunately been picking up in the amount of people that have been diagnosed with it uh, even my little sister um, maybe facing an MS diagnosis. So it's odd that, you know, a family member has it. There's some potential hereditary link, but not necessarily a huge correlation. Um, but yeah, so like I said, this is kind of just my story. I don't, it's a long video. I'm sure I've lost a million, most followers by now. Um, but hopefully you found something of interest in it and I'll come on and share more of my life. This just happens to be one of the big things that uh, impact me on a daily basis. Uh, but I have a lot, a lot of stories to share um, and hopefully some resonate with you.